test two. Okay, everyone, and welcome to a Phoenix Point class guide. And today I want to talk about snipers. Let me just set the scope really quickly. Haha, <laughs> scope, get it, snipers. Um, terrible puns will be included in this video, but I'm going to try and keep it pretty tight. We're going to talk about the sniper, what role they play, and we're going to talk about their early equipment. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts of multi-classing, but I want to do multi-classes as their own video. So while I will flag some of the good sniper multi-classes, the potential of those classes in detail, I'm going to cover in separate videos now that I want to start milling out these class guide videos relatively quickly compared to what I've been doing. So the sniper, what does it do as a class? Um, how do you want to use it early on? What does the early equipment look like? What are those tactical roles? Um, and then what are its weaknesses? And finally, our final evaluation. Last time I did that, it was on the heavy, and I told you that early game heavies really suffer. Um, snipers are the complete other end of the spectrum. If the heavy is the class that gives you nothing, well, not nothing, but gives you very little value relative to its very high cost in the early game. There is no class more expensive than a heavy in terms of resources. The sniper is your crutch in the early game. They hard counter. Most Pandorans that you will encounter in the early game, they are very good against human opponents, and they are the crutch that will carry your teams through most of your initial missions, only for them to eventually be outshone. Let's talk about their abilities and why they have that ability. What is the basic essence of a sniper? So it's a highly accurate class that comes with a sniper rifle, which as you might expect is a high damage, high accuracy, single shot per turn weapon. They have a secondary skill ability in that they can use pistols. They are proficient in handguns. Um, which means most snipers will want to carry a handgun, and they have a collection of perk abilities that means that they power spike really quite early in the game. I'm going to take you through the perks, I'm going to take you through the essence of the tier 1 equipment, and then we'll talk about how it's used. So, snipers perks. Starts with extreme focus. Overwatch cost is reduced by one action point. And this is important in two senses. Uh, the sniper rifle takes three action points to fire, which means snipers are not that mobile ordinarily. Except for the fact that perks mitigate that almost completely. The uh, extreme focus allows you to move two squares and then overwatch, as opposed to two squares and shoot, which is what a standard class can do. It essentially means that you can overwatch for the same price as, say, an assault can. Now, since if you set your overwatches up correctly, they can often be the same or better than shots, the extreme focus allows you to take, if you're patient, some sniper rifle shots with a little less control on your opponent's turn and still remain moderately mobile. It also importantly allows you to take your pistol and overwatch for free. Pistol overwatches only cost one ordinarily because they cost one to fire. A pistol overwatch with extreme focus is free. You can move four AP and then overwatch. This means when snipers are bounding forward, so let's just say they've taken a few shots, the rest of the team has gotten ahead of them, it's time for them to bound forward and catch up. They can move full four AP and they can overwatch with the pistol really handy and it comes straight away at level 2 which is basically an instant level up and only costs 10 SP. Quick aim. Quick aim comes at level 3 and is amazing um, and it only costs 15 SP. In terms of like the level 3 abilities in the game this is better than dash and dash is pretty damn good. Quick aim reduces the action point cost of the next shot with a proficient weapon by one. This means that if a sniper does not move and is willing to spend six willpower points, he can shoot his sniper rifle twice in one turn. This gives a lot of out damage output at a long distance compared to other um, resources you have available to it at the start of the game. Uh, an assault firing an assault rifle twice will not put out the same damage at a medium or long range, sometimes even a short range target as a sniper will with two shots from the sniper rifle. Plus, if you're getting kills with any of those shots, which is pretty likely in the early game through to the mid game that you'll get shot uh, kills with every one to two sniper rifle rounds. Um, you're going to get some will point refresh from killing your target. So that three willpower doesn't really get realized. This also has another great benefit, which is as long as you have willpower able to fill, um, to feed into the sniper, pistol shots with quick aim are free. So if you have an oh shit moment and someone appears in your face and you fire your sniper rifle, and it doesn't quite kill them, or it doesn't take off the arm, 
you can dump two, three, four, heck, five pistol rounds into a target. And when pistols are capable of doing a reasonable amount of damage, the new Jericho Iron Fury does 60 damage per shot, which is um, only half that of the sniper rifle. It's a lot of supplemental damage as long as you have willpower to feed them. And because this game has lots of ways, as well as having a big willpower pool, kills give you refresh, um, other troops hitting uh, willpower recharge points, those glowing points on the map, um, that gives you willpower uh, refresh. Getting to a supply box and opening it, willpower refresh. There's a lot of ways to pump willpower into your troops to keep those quick aim shots going. This ability removes or significantly mitigates the main downside of the sniper, which is the three action point shot cost on the sniper rifle. Notice that you come into the sniper being promised a low mobility, high damage, three AP weapon with the 3 AP being the main mitigating factor. And at skill 2 and 3, you get two abilities that basically eliminate most of the drawback. This is why, one of the reasons why, rather, snipers are really good early. It's not just that this class is good for the early game, it's that they get abilities early which make them amazing. Um, and their latter stuff is not as impressive. At uh, level 4, you multi-class, everyone's like that. Level 5, again, 20 SP, not expensive. Accuracy with a proficient weapon is increased by 30% when there are no spotted enemies within 10 tiles. Now, I think the mark of a good ability is that it magnifies strengths you already have. It rewards you for doing something you're going to do anyway. Snipers are going to be more than 10 tiles away from their opponents a lot of the time. And 30% accuracy is a huge buff. So... With Master Marksmen, snipers just get even better at doing what they were going to do anyway, staying out of range of their opponents and popping shots off. This means that you're even more likely to sit still and use quick aim because you don't need to get closer to your opponents. You get a reward from being further away, so you're more likely to start popping people with quick aim from a static position, dominating half of the map, especially when you get the more accurate guns. Level 6, so now we're getting quite advanced. Weak spot. Weak spot. I like in a lot of ways. Um, it's not incredible, but it's also very useful, and here's why. It's not another willpower using ability. The sniper already by level 6 has all the willpower using abilities that it needs in the form of quick aim. Quick aim just eats all of a sniper's willpower. It's another reason why I wouldn't normally have a lot of willpower using abilities in whatever you multi-class with. Weak spot is just a free passive, and again, rewards you for doing shit you're going to do anyway. Disabling a body part also removes that body part's armor. So, sniper rifles do lots of damage, which means armor doesn't worry them as much. You can punch through 30-40 armor. This means if you're facing an opponent with a large health pool, but lots and lots of armor, if you can set it up so the sniper punches through and disables a body part, say, an arm, but it can also be a torso or a head. Torso is probably pretty valuable with this sort of ability. You strip, you shred all of that armor. When you talk about late-game sniper rifles, which have 80 pen and can punch through any armor, suddenly this thing is the one that hole punches it, tears it open, and becomes one of the best shred options in the game. Then all of your other troops can pile on the rapid fire, high DPS, but low pen weapons. They can pile on into the removed body part. So you could strip all the armor off a Scylla's body part, off a Siren's body part. Um, if you don't have a good shot on an Arthron, you want to stri uh, strip its armor in the late game, more niche case. It's useful. You don't lose anything having it. It's just a good ability and you don't pay willpower. So I'm in for weak spot. It's just not as game changing as ability levels two and three. Then we get to Marked for Death. Now, Marked for Death is an ultimate ability. It's not the worst ultimate ability. Um, <clears throat> it is niche, but when it's in its niche, it's pretty good. Marked for Death costs full willpower points, four willpower points, and uh, doesn't use action points. You mark a target, and then each hit from every individual bullet or hit that hits an opponent gets 10 extra damage until the end of the turn. Where is this useful? Well, if you're fighting a really big boss character and you're going to put all of your shots into it, this might get you a significant amount of extra bonus damage, but only if you're working with the right sort of weapons, things that are going to deal lots and lots of hits 
um, like machine guns, things like rage bursts, things like explosives that will hit multiple, anything that will generate multiple hits benefits from Marked for Death. And here again, we see some serious synergy. Marked for Death is good at um, dealing with opponents who you're going to put an entire team's worth of firepower into. And it rewards you for applying it first. Weak Spot is a way to open up a heavily armored enemy so rapid fire, low penetration weapons can do their absolute best. PDWs are another good example. So, the obvious combo here is that if you're facing a big boss character like a Scylla and you would like to kill it, there are many ways to kill Scylla, I know. You can use Legacy of the Ancient, the Scyther, you can use all sorts of ways to kill Scylla relatively efficiently. But generic big evil target, mark it for death, weak spot it, so maybe you fire twice or whatever, fire twice, strip the armor, and then the entire team pours their rounds in and gets the maximum benefit from Mark for Death. Mm -hmm. They've saved all the armor reduction because you've weak spot stripped the armor, and they're getting plus 10 per bullet. You, you can get to some pretty ludicrous damage numbers pretty quickly with the sniper once you get to level 7. These are nice to have. These are boss-killing tools. These are utility. Extreme Focus, Master Marksman, and Quick Aim are all utility, which basically remove the sniper's built-in weaknesses and give you a really sort of sensible platform. Let's talk about the Tier 1 equipment. Then let's talk about the tactical role, the build for the character, and thus why you can really lean on this in the early game. So, the tier 1 equipment, you get a sniper rifle, you get a uh, handgun, and then you get an armor set. We're looking here at the full new Jericho armor set, so you get uh, plus 9% accuracy and perception. And this is a theme. Across the sniper set, you lose a little bit of speed in exchange for lots of accuracy and a bit of perception. Perception being what increases your spot distance and your potential overwatch distance, which you'll guess is pretty bloody important when you're dealing with someone who shoots and overwatches at long range. Mm -hmm. Sniper rifles, there's a couple. I think I've got three available here for demonstration. They're the tier ones. Uh, so a quick refresher. Um, your options, you have three at the start of the game. The Firebird is your default Phoenix Point one. You get 110 damage, 51 effective range, costs three AP to fire, eight ammo capacity. The New Jericho one is a straight upgrade in every respect except for range. Um, range Think of it less as range and think of it more as accuracy. The new Jericho gun is less accurate than the um, than the Phoenix Point rifle, but you get more ammo capacity and more importantly, you get 20 extra damage. So for punching into heavy targets and killing them, the new Jericho rifle, a lot of people will prefer the Cyclops. The other end of the spectrum is this thing, the Pythagoras. The Pythagoras is just better in every way. Um, it has an effective range of 63, which means it will shot, shoot the wings off an insect at extreme distance. So, mind fraggers, limb shots, you name it, this thing is the king of, uh, the top dog of long distance warfare at the beginning of the game. 15 ammo capacity means you probably don't have to carry a spare magazine, which is that little power cell there. And if you do, um, well, you're only going to have to carry one of them, even for the longest missions. It also means that every time you steal, a, or sorry, every time you obtain a power cell from Sinedrian, it goes just that further. Looting one power cell equals 15 shots, which is five more than the Cyclops. You lose out on 10 damage relative to the Cyclops in exchange for ammo capacity um, and accuracy. The Pythagoras is just undisputed champion of tier 1 sniper rifles. So, but they all share the 3 AP, high damage, high accuracy profile. You also get a pistol. Um, the profile on the pistols we've talked about before, it's basically New Jericho gives you a pistol which is higher damage than the Phoenix Point one. Anu gives you an even higher damage handgun which costs 2 AP to fire and is horribly inaccurate which is why most people don't use it. And then you get the laser pistols from Sinedrian which are more accurate and still high damage and have high clip sizes. Uh, Sinedrian weapons are amazing. So a laser pistol as a secondary weapon can be pretty damn good. Um, I'll see if I've got one in this team quickly. No, I've got stun pistols. I'm not sure who's carrying the laser pistol. It's probably going to be the Berserker. I've just loaded up this playthrough. Nope, they're not carrying pistols. 
If we can't find it, there it is. That's the, this is the Hephaestus laser pistol. So damage 50, ammunition capacity 22, effective range 27. And 27 is not bad. Like you can do some decent shots with these things. Remembering snipers can put out a lot of them. Uh, 50 damage is also not negligible. You can put out a lot of shots. Iron Fury gives you 10 more damage, but your ammunition capacity uh, is less than half and your effective range is again down to 14 as compared to 22. Not half, but still pretty bloody bad. Let's go back to the snipers for a moment and discuss one other key aspect of the tier one gear. Um, as well as the obvious synergy of just putting more accuracy on your equipment, um, the pistol competency means that if you want to, once you obtain them, they are also your primary carriers of capture technology that isn't melee ranged. There are two tier one capture devices. Uh, the Neuralizer and this thing, the Hera NP1, which is a stun pistol. Later on, there is a ranged stun weapon again, but it's a sniper rifle. So snipers are the class that carry your ranged ability to stun people. Now, thinking about the stun pistol for a moment, has an ammunition capacity of eight, so you're probably gonna have to carry spare magazines. It does seven paralysis. Now seven paralysis does not compare well to the eight paralysis on the neuralizer you would think, but, 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 think this through for a moment. One, you don't have to get as close to the target, which means you're not gonna waste AP moving. Two, you can overwatch with it for free, which means if you think the enemy's gonna run because it's almost fully paralyzed, overwatch it, you'll put a round into it and stun it as it runs. Also, quick aim means you can take, as long as you have willpower, take stunning shots with this pistol. While there is an ammunition cost associated with using the Hera, unlike using the Neuralizer, which still means most of your captures are gonna come with the Neuralizer. If you really wanna stun something and bring it home, you're probably gonna have a bunch of captured ammunition from the Hera, if you're playing like me and you have to raid St. Adrian to get their aircraft early game. You're probably gonna have a bunch of ammunition. You will stun targets and bring them home. And if you're dealing with tough targets where you need to put a lot of paralysis down in one turn, geez, I wonder what sort of enemies I could be talking about there. Snipers are the class that will do it. They'll bring stun pistols and stun rifles. They'll put two stun rifle rounds in um, from long distance, or they'll put a whole brace of pistol rounds in, feed them willpower, they'll stun it and they'll leave it drooling on the floor so you can drag it back and turn it into sashimi or research it or whatever. Great. All this so far must sound amazing, like snipers are great. And there's more good to come. Snipers, in terms of stats, don't really need strength. They can save on strength relative to other classes. The reason is they shouldn't need lots of hit points because they shouldn't be getting shot if you're playing them correctly. They do, however, need speed and willpower. Speed because they're naturally slowed a little bit by their equipment and they don't have a jump pack unlike an assault. They are the least mobile of the starting classes. Willpower because more willpower equals more quick aim. So pump that willpower right up. Uh, preferably in multiples of three plus one. So you don't zero out if you quick aim down to your last willpower and you'll be able to just quick aim more and more and more. This leads to problems later on, however, because they're a class that tends to eat all of their willpower and not have relatively high stocks. So let's start talking about how you apply that sniper and thus why it becomes weaker over time. At the start of the game, the role of the sniper is very simple. They will do probably a majority of your killing. Heavies are not very lethal at the start of the game. Assaults have assault rifles, which are okay, but inferior to sniper rifles, especially sniper rifles with quick aim in terms of doing damage. You don't have shotguns yet. And if you do have shotguns and melee weapons, you don't have the high level abilities that turn assaults into murder machines. You don't have cross classes with Berserker, which is another thing which turns heavies and assaults into absolute nutcases. You don't have any of this other fancy stuff. What you do have is some sniper boys with really accurate rifles who can put down lightly armored targets with single rounds. When they can't put a target down in the early game, they can certainly knock out limbs. And this makes snipers 
king of dealing with humans in the early game. And even later on, they never lose their ability to deal with humans really, really well. It's just that other classes start to catch up. The reason is that shooting the arm of a human will take their primary weapon in most cases out of contention. Whether that's a machine gun, a sniper rifle, or assault rifle, they're going to be down to their backups, unless it's Anu and it's a melee combatant. And if it's a melee combatant from Anu, it's not that dangerous to begin with. The only Anu guys that are dangerous early on are the shotgunners, and even then, they're not great. Snipers will also be your Overwatch providers, they will cover huge like swaths of the map and make sure you do not get ambushed. They will cover you as you advance on scavenging missions. They'll hit the early crates and then they'll just cover everyone else as they run. They are your bedrock. They are your firebase and far more reliably than an assault with an assault rifle and definitely more than a heavy with a tear or a machine gun. They'll cover distance. They'll put down a base of fire. They'll also kill your opponents for you. They'll disable them. They'll stun them. They'll bring the enemies home. Great. Why does the sniper sort of uh, drop off in the late game? This is not to say snipers are bad, but it's to say that snipers lack the game-breaking potential of some of the late game cross-class combos. There's not a lot you can put on a sniper that makes it completely stupid. Um, so I'll go quickly through some of those multi-classes I said without delving into the strategy in particular. But we're going to compare it to the abilities that other classes get at higher levels. A sniper who is cross-class with Berserker can put four sniper rounds out in one turn. Sure. That sounds really good. But compare and contrast with a heavy that is cross-class with Berserker later in the game is going to put four grenade launcher rounds out in a turn. An assault with cross-class with Berserker may be able to kill chain the entire map because they'll shoot for one and they'll refresh two AP every time they kill something. So an assault with a high damage melee weapon or with a shard gun might chain their way through a huge horde of enemies while the heavy is putting out four grenades, which are superior to four sniper rounds generally, if you have the rebuke grenade launcher. Um, and other classes to benefit in similar sort of ways. There's some mean cross-class combos you can do. The sniper, the, the synergy is not uber there in terms of game-breaking classes. If there is, there are some good opportunities with the infiltrator where you can get extra damage if not revealed, and by virtue of distance, you are unlikely to be revealed. But at the same time, the sniper is not going to want to wear stealth armor naturally. He's going to want the accuracy bonus, so you're giving that up by switching over to infiltrator gear and silencing your weapons. Um, you don't have an equivalent to the things like rapid clearance, um, the Boom Blast or the Adrenaline Burst from the Berserker, which let you shoot multiple high damage grenades. It's not incredible later on. It's just good. You will go into the middle, the late middle and late game with the ability to shoot two sniper rounds, maybe some pistol shots, or if you're cross-class Berserker and it's an important turn, you'll get four sniper rounds. That's good but it's not incredible. The other problem is that later in the game, um, willpower targeting and high damage area of effect threats become much more common. In the early game, the number of things that will throw grenades at you, or the number of things that will try and mind control you or target your willpower generally is quite low. This suits the sniper. Um, snipers can take cover and be at long distance, which gives them fantastic protection against most shooting, shooting attacks. Enemies are not any more accurate than you. You're in cover. You're unlikely to be hit. So you, you won't take targets from bullets. The willpower targeting effects are really bad for snipers because they tend to run low on willpower because they always want to be feeding quick aim shots out, or at least this is the temptation. And marked for death adds even more willpower demand. Of all your classes, snipers are one of the most likely to be running low on willpower. Low willpower means you're easier to panic and you're easier to mind control. And having your sniper mind controlled while he's in the back of your team is 
freaking horrifying because he'll then start gunning people down with that armor piercing high accuracy gun that even the AI knows how to use. It's problematic. Panic 2 obviously takes them out of the game, moves them out of position. They're quite squishy. The proliferation of blast weapons takes advantage of the fact that the sniper doesn't have much protection. The sniper sets are the least protective of the ordinary armor that you will normally get. And you're relatively slow moving in them. Because you're squishy, proliferation of things like artillery chirons can really ruin a sniper's day because the sniper doesn't want to be using all their movement points getting into cover inside and they can't tank the damage at all compared to say classes like heavies who actually have some armor protection and can survive moderately well some blast attacks. Uh, when New Jericho starts deploying its rockets that's another example. There are lots of things later on that start proliferating AoE, and snipers hate AoE. Some people might feel like their snipers are forced into the infiltrator class in order to avoid being blasted. I think that's. I think there's other way to deal with blast weapons than just trying to infiltrate your entire force, and you're going to reveal yourself anyway with a lot of your shooting. Um, but the point is the basic characteristics of the sniper. High single target damage, uh, abilities that come online really early, sort of come early and then don't expand the way that some of the other classes do in terms of getting late game abilities. They do, however, have definite uses, even later on. They're good against the Ancients, for example. There's lots of uh, Ancient types when you're clearing Ancient sites where a Sniper uh, at a distance or on the flank can really mess them up, but then again, so can a Rebuke. So can a rebuke grenade launcher, but you know, uh, a sniper with a scorpion, particularly damaging. There's also a point that in the middle game, snipers are one of the few units that gets a really specialized capable T2 weapon that upgrades them. This is the uh, the Virophage sniper rifle, I think the Gungir, Gungnir from memory. Sorry, I mangled that. I'm an Aussie, remember? Um, this is a rifle that does two Pandorans and two mutated people. Uh, something like 190 damage. I think it's 110 plus 80 virophage from memory. It's reasonably accurate. So that gives you a really, really hard-hitting mid-game weapon for use against Pandorans and very specific targets. But later on, it's made completely obsolete by the legacy the ancient gun. So, how many snipers should I recruit? Why should I recruit them early? How should I use them? Uh, you should recruit lots of snipers, I think, in the early game. They're also cheap, which is one thing I didn't mention, which I'm going to add on now. Sniper equipment is not that expensive. So if you're playing on higher difficulty levels, um, unlike a heavy, which costs huge amounts of materials and technology, getting a sniper from New Jericho um, or Sanhedrin is not horribly expensive in terms of their gear then all they really need is a rifle. The pistol is optional, but valuable. And manufacturing one uh, sniper rifle for them, so one Phoenix Point rifle for them, is not a huge investment. If you look at the Firebird, it's 115 mats and six tech. Now, the Ares is cheaper, sure, but you're gonna be putting a lot more ammo and you get a lot less out of an Ares in practical terms than you do out of one Firebird. There's no secondary equipment requirement. The armor is relatively cheap. If we compare the Edolan body armor, it's 14 tech, 115 materials, versus the War Dog, which is 14 tech and 110 materials. Negligible, negligible savings for armor that gives a much better bonus, to the extent that I sometimes issue sniper helmets to classes that don't normally have them. There is an alternative way of gearing a sniper, which is to give them jump jets. The jump, the jump sniper build. The problem with the jump sniper build, which is a sniper with a heavy torso, is one, you can fumble it if you're not cross-classed, and two, um, there's minus 8% accuracy on the Anvil 2, similar for the Phoenix equivalent, the Goliath, minus uh, Golem rather, minus 8% accuracy, which is a lot less than the plus accuracy that you get, the plus 5 you get on the Adolan body. It's a big accuracy swing. It's tolerable, but if you go for the jump sniper, you're spending a lot more resources for some mobility. And you're going to be, yeah, you're spending a lot more for that mobility and you're losing accuracy, and accuracy is key to the sniper. So, early game, recruit snipers. I think two per team is absolutely reasonable. 
you go into battle with two, and you some see in some cases, I've even got three in some teams. Uh, for this playthrough, I had a chance to recruit them, but here there's a Manticore, two on that Manticore, three on that Helios, three on the other Helios. Um, they'll carry you, they'll level, they'll help you survive early on, but you want to make sure you're developing troops of other classes that will mature later on, so that as you make the transition, you can bulk out your teams, you can keep your snipers, but you can expand the size of the team or the numbers of the team and add new troops that have become useful. People like the heavies, people who you can recruit, develop in your training centers, and once you've got the technology and the unlocks to make them amazing, add them to the teams to supplement the snipers as the snipers begin to lose some of their luster relative to the other classes. Anyway, absolutely top tier basic class, great equipment, lean on them heavily. If you're, if you're suffering in the early game of Phoenix Point, it might be because you don't have enough snipers. That might legitimately be a thing. You might have too many heavies and not enough snipers. Later on, diversify your teams a little more. But the benefits of early unlocks, a high utility weapon, uh, having a secondary stun roll, the forgivingness and flexibility that comes from having that pistol, the free shots, the free overwatch, all of it um, means that you probably can't go wrong spending the relatively few resources to recruit snipers into your ranks early on. I don't think Festering Skies will change that. I think these guys will retain their trophy as kings of the early and early middle game, and they remain a solid pick throughout. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, shorter, sharper guide video. Let me know what you think, if there's any sort of elements you want me to add back before I do the assault. Otherwise, you'll hear from me soon. I'll do assaults, then we'll start talking advanced classes, and importantly, multi-classes. Cheers, guys.